Welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast, where we talk about fitness, health, and anything to help you become the most optimal human beings. Let's dive into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here with Joe Courtney. What's up, Joe? What's going on, man? Not much. We are going over our top four undervalued, underutilized core exercises as a organization that's programmed millions of training sessions for individuals over the years. What are we doing to try and get our athletes to do that they don't regularly do? So here are our top four. Joe, I'll let you take one and I'll go next. What do you got? What's number one? So one that I like to program at least once per cycle, and I think you had it included into an article a long, long, long time ago, I think back in your CrossFit article writing days, and that is a front rack hold. So how you would hold the barbell in the front rack, hold it for about 60 or so seconds. Um, it's going to force you to, I mean, you're holding a load under weight or you're, you're holding, you're bracing your core under load because um, that's how you're going to hold weight anyway. So it's good to practice how you play. Uh, front rack position is really fantastic because it, it forces you to engage so much of your core because your actual abs in your core. Uh, it's also one of the big, one of the big benefits that I like to use it for as well is because it works the upper and mid back. And one of the main areas that I see athletes break down when they go to max out is the upper and mid back. It's like the, the, that area of the body is like the first thing to buckle under you, whether it's a deadlift back squat, front, uh, front squat, whatever it is, that seems to be a, like once that starts to buckle a little bit, you get just that tiny bit out of position and, uh, it, it'll mess up your max. So but that front rack hold really, really helps in those situations, keeping your elbows up nice and high. And if you aren't doing, um, <clears throat> proper front rack position, you know, if you're crossing your arms instead of actually like getting your elbows out in front of you, this is a great time to, to use, to, to practice that and work on it because it's so much stronger of a position for front squatting, but the front rack hold is a fantastic one to throw in and, you know, do a hold for 60 seconds, try and um, pick a challenging weight. And then after that, uh, maybe challenge yourself to add a little bit as you go and make sure you note what you, what you hold. So then you can keep that, um, that level. <clears throat> I think the front rack hold is an amazing, amazing pick. Um, I remember the very first time I ever, like when I was getting into more performance-based training, um, I had like a really crazy front squat session. And I remember my friend was like, your abs are going to be really sore. And I was like, abs, we're doing squats. What are you talking about? Um, but if you're bracing properly, and I remember my abs were so sore the next day. Like it's yeah. it's such a great uh, exercise. And some would argue that the only real way to build up your core is through like loads like that, like back squat loads, front squat loads, like loads under pressure, build up your core more than it's not that these other exercises don't just a lot more. They're a lot better for building your core than like a sit up. Right. Um, so I'll get to mine. My mine is going to be any kind of isometric hold. So I know that's a little bit more uh, vague. It's not a one particular exercise. Technically a front rack hold is an isometric hold. Um, so I'm kind of just stealing Joe's, but then like broadening it out. Um, because I think that people don't do enough isometric holds. If you follow our programming, you do, you're doing front leaning rest all the damn time. Uh, but we do a lot of stuff to do these things. And I think it's not just doing them, it's the execution. So really like trying to suck your belly button down to your spine and focus on your form during these isometric holds is really important. And I think, um, can build a lot uh, of strength that you don't even know that you need when, when you're getting stronger. So any kind of isometric holds, whether that's front leaning rest, planks, side planks, star planks, any kind of plank front rack holds, like you can do a lot of different stuff, uh, to get isometric and hold it for long durations. Because I think that the abdominals, cause we use them so much as human beings, they need a lot more stimulus to get better. Uh, so that's why I think three sets of 10 sit-ups is like basically a waste of your time. I mean, maybe if you're really untrained, but you really need to to get under load and do it for long periods of time. So that's my number two. How about number three, Joe? Yeah. Well, I was so just more on ISO holds. Those are super, anybody can do them because you're just yeah. basically holding for as long as you can. And planks and, are terrible. And if you've never done a star plank, you're not in our programming and you should totally look look it up and tr just try to do a star plank ever. for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And, and you can do planks like um on a wall. Like if you're like really 
starting off, like just kind of angle your body. Um, like there are lots of ways to do, do like, do these things like to where they're not like the ultimate difficulty. And if you want to make them harder, you can always make them harder. You can add a uh, plates on your back, weight vest on something like that. So, so get to mine is barbell side bends. <clears throat> this is one of those that without fail for like, I don't know the first dozen times you do this, even with an empty barbell, you're going to be sore afterwards because mm -hmm. it's working your entire side, your oblique. So you, you have the barbell on your back and you're, um, bending side to side, you're working your obliques. And I, I actually like to do these on my knees as well, because there's less, I have to bend more with the core versus actually like swaying with the legs some. So that's like the, the, the next step up. And also when the barbell taps the ground, I know I've gone to, um, rep completion or whatever you want to so full extension. So just a, a tip on that one, but barbell side bends is fantastic. Ha working the obliques is also a great way. To, I mean, you need to have that sort of control not just it again not just sit-ups uh, is are for are for core or abs so um and you don't even need to add weight for a long time before you start to before you before you you know need to yeah so i mean since you took it there i'm gonna so we, we transition from middle you know abdominals out obliques and now if we're talking about a little bit posterior chain i'm gonna throw in the reverse hyper whether you are doing these with a re re reverse hyper machine, you're doing one of our many like uh, DIY ways to get it done. We've suggested over the years. Um, there are a lot of different ways you can get a reverse hyper done without actually buying one or doing like Superman's. But I think that this is often overlooked. Um, a lot of training programs I see out there will kind of, um, you know, they, they put their abdominal training like somewhere and it's like five minutes at the end of the session and I'm not hating on that. Like we, we put our, a lot of our core work at the end, uh, and it, it can be 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Sometimes we do up go 20 minutes or, or whatever it is. Uh, but they, it, it's often not thought out very much. And then there's an over reliance and focus on just trying to train, train those abs because that's what people like want to see in a mirror. Right. So they're focused on the abs, but you really need to think of your posterior chain, your glutes, um, your obliques your abdominals, like everything getting trained to really be strong because you'd really want these, these areas. Um, and I'm, I'm adding one more just because I, I want to, um, Joe kind of hit on it with his, um, barbell side bends, but getting out of the same plane of movement all the time, like doing some sort of like Russian twist or like side bends. So you're not always in this linear, um, plane of movement, I think is something that also will help you prevent injury. If you're getting more twisting motions, uh, in your programming and training, I think it really reduces your injury, um, chance of injury, because I, I always think it's funny. Like I, I saw this guy post the other day. He's like, injuries almost always happen. Like when you're doing something else, like when you're playing with your kid and like all this other stuff. And, but his point, which I thought was very wrong was that like training is not dangerous. He's like, training's not dangerous that you always get hurt. Like, you know, picking up a penny off the ground or yeah, playing with your kids, all this other crap. But my argument to that would be you're training improperly if those things are happening to you, because <laughs> you're not like, you're not getting to the different planes of movement. I've been in those situations and I hate it where I'm like, you tweak something just because you moved a weird way. It's because you're not training enough, uh, you know, the different planes of movement. That's where our body geometry comes in into play. And we could save that for a different video, but I do think just getting different planes of movement in your training is also really important for your core. Yeah. All Four right, core cool. exercises, kind of five bonus Four plus a bonus bonus, like tip. There you go. Yeah. Some programming to think about. Uh, but that's it for this one, guys. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel for any future videos that are coming out. Gives us, give us thumbs up and uh, a comment. Let us know how we're doing on these videos. Uh, we would really appreciate that. Then if you're on the podcast listener, five-star review and a positive comment, that really helps us show out. Uh, it pushes out to more people and we appreciate that. If you feel like people need to hear, uh, this content, let them know, you know, leave a review. Uh, but that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching or listening. For listening to the Garage Gym Athlete podcast. If you want to learn more, go to garagegymathlete.com. You can learn about our training. Let us send you a copy of our book, The Garage Gym Athlete, or you can even get featured on the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Thanks for listening.